Hey besties, it's Sarah. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing what is technically a second part to a video that I did many years ago. I once got to thinking, what are the worst books of all time on Goodreads according to reviewers? And so I used their list feature and I found one. So I went through all of those and I chose, I believe the five worst that I could find that were statistically significant where they had the lowest ratings, but also the most amount of ratings. And so I ended up reading a bunch of books. And so I posted this video, I believe in 2018. I don't know what it is about that video, but it brings in viewers to this day and it has like over 150,000 views. People just love watching it. And so I thought it's been many years, like five years in fact, why not do a part two? Because apparently I hate myself. So you guys get to come along in this journey and watch me suffer as I read four horrible, horrible books from this random list. I really thought that I would never subject myself to this concept again, but I feel like it's time. You guys love watching me read books I hate and I love entertaining you. So let's just get into this vlog. Okay, besties, I thought the best way to do this video would be to read the least worst all the way to the very worst. And so the first book on this list that I've been reading is Lost by Gregory Maguire. This book has an average rating of 2.83. Something that you need to know if you haven't seen my other video is that any book on Goodreads that has under a three star rating is typically considered a pretty bad rating. This has over 14,000 ratings and only 25% of them are four or five stars. For the sake of talking about these books, I've kind of considered three star ratings as no man's land. So I'm really looking at the four and five stars and then the one and two star ratings. And so like I said, there's 25% of four and five and then there is 38% of people gave this one or two stars and then 34% of people are, are the no man's land people who gave it three stars. The TBR for this video is really so random. There are a lot of books that I just never would have even guessed to be on this list. Gregory Maguire is actually the guy that wrote the book Wicked that the very famous musical is based off of and so Lost is his least popular book. He wrote it in 2001 and from my understanding so far I am about halfway through. It's about this woman named Winnie who is a writer and she has been trying to write her next novel and she is thinking about writing about Jack the Ripper and so she goes on a trip to London to visit her cousin and it is said that their family is descendants of Scrooge himself like her great great grandfather or whoever was the guy that inspired Charles Dickens to write The Christmas Carol and so when she gets there her cousin is missing and she can't find him and she starts to discover that maybe the house is haunted like there's something like living in the wall and so my biggest complaint so far is that what is going on like nothing has really happened and Winnie is not a very likable character to read from she is a hater to her core and she literally hates everyone around her she's also a woman hater like she hates every other woman she comes across and i'm very strongly getting the impression that she has a crush on her cousin because whenever she talks about him she talks about all of his different dalliances with different women and how she doesn't even care like she's like i just don't even care about all these women that he sleeps with like whatever like he's just like a guy living in london um, and then one of the women allegra that supposedly has a history with her cousin and she has to go see Allegra to talk to her to ask like maybe where the cousin might be and there's just like a lot of jealousy going on and it's very uncomfortable because he is her cousin like the implication is that they're related so I don't really know why she has a crush on her cousin and at this point in the book they have kind of uncovered something in the walls and so it's kind of giving like haunted house vibes I guess and I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to be getting out of this like I don't know what genre this is supposed to be Apparently all of Gregory Maguire's other books are actually rooted in more like fantasy lands like Wicked, for example. Um, this is the only book that I think he's written that like takes place in our world. And I'm just really not certain where this is going. Um, she's talking about Jack the Ripper a lot, like really talking about a lot. And then she's basing her book off of a character named Wendy who is supposed to be inspired by like Peter Pan. So there's a lot of references to old like British like children's literature. And if you are confused by me describing this, I'm also confused. I don't really know what I'm getting out of this. When I skimmed reviews of this, a lot of people rated this really low because they complain that nothing really happens and they didn't really know what they're supposed to get out of it. And I'd have to say so far, I agree. I am hoping that we can find an undercover hit in this vlog, like an underdog, if you will. Maybe I can be one of the people that loves it. 
but unfortunately so far that's not the case and in the last rendition of this video that was also not the case so we'll see what happens i will update you soon when i finish lost um so far i am lost i think that the book is aptly named i think that you are supposed to feel lost while you're reading it i will say though gregory mcguire's writing style is actually very good i would be interested in reading something else by him because his actual prose is quite good i just don't love his characterization of winnie she's giving me bad vibes like i I don't want to be a hater on her even though she's a hater um but she's making it hard to like her she really is like she's just extremely negative and like not in a fun way and she's very mean-spirited and maybe that is because she's a descendant of scrooge himself okay besties i finished lost by gregory mcguire and honestly i didn't even really hate it that much i don't think i can in good conscience give it three stars but i think it's a solid two and a half star i think that the main issue with this book is that gregory mcguire had way too many ideas for it and so it ended up being a very convoluted reading experience but his prose is just so good that i found myself really enjoying just listening to his writing and also at the end of the book we found out that winnie was hiding some things she was sort of an unreliable narrator so i actually really enjoyed some of the reviews that came up because I really didn't see them coming and so I really liked a lot of those aspects but I will say that for the first like three-fourths of the book not a lot is going on and we have these weird undercurrents of feeling like she loves her cousin I will say we find out eventually that he's her step cousin so they're not actually like blood related but he still is like her cousin that she was raised with as family but that's neither here nor there after we figure out what has happened to his character and why he's been missing we also discover a lot of things like I said that Winnie was hiding and not really coming clean about in her own mind and I really found a lot of that exploration to be really interesting it was just that the last fourth was very <laughs> convoluted. I don't really want to say exactly what happens because I feel like it will spoil the book for you guys. But basically, it suddenly becomes really intense and there is like all these scenes where I, don't, I can't really say without spoiling it but there's just a bunch of stuff that comes up that's really random and out of place like not random because we were dealing with kind of like a haunted house vibe in the beginning i will say when i gave my last update it definitely was giving more haunted house vibes but then as the book went on we sort of dropped the haunted house thing and then it became more about like where her cousin was and so like i said it was just very all over the place and so i definitely cannot give it three stars but there was something special about it i don't know like not special like oh it's really good but special as in like it really makes me want to read other books by Gregory Maguire. I actually honestly don't think that it's fair to put this on the list of like worst books on Goodreads. I definitely can see why people had problems with it and why they didn't enjoy it but ultimately I don't think it's the worst thing that I've ever read. Like I was very pleasantly surprised by some of the things that happened later in the book and so I feel like this is the best it's gonna get for this book like it's it's definitely not on my worst list but it's definitely not on my best list either so we're gonna settle with like a two and a half star rating and i'm definitely gonna pick up something else by greg and mcguire like maybe i'll pick up wicked or one of his other books and i feel like that would be a really good time so i have finished another book i probably should have updated you guys a little bit sooner but unfortunately i really didn't like this not to spoil the book even before we get into it but i thought this was really bad so i was really struggling to read it let alone update you guys so let's just talk about this book so I can put it out of my mind and put myself out of my misery. So this book that I read is The Finkler Question by Howard Jacobson. So this book came out in 2010 and it actually won the Man Booker Prize that year, which is truly confounding to me. My understanding of the Man Booker Prize is that it is very prestigious. It's for like lit fic that just really will like rock your world. I don't know if I've ever read a Man Booker Prize winner before, um, but my first one wasn't the best experience. This book has over 15,000 ratings with a 2.81 average. Only 27% of people have given this four or five stars and 38% of people gave it one or two stars. I'm one of those people. I will be giving it one star. So the book in question, the Finkler question, if you will, is about these three men, Libor, Sam, and Treslov. Julian Treslov is this guy that is really obsessed with like saving women. Like he always likes to date women that are really weak and whatever. And he's been like this his whole life. And then we have Sam, who is a Jewish man that is a TV personality and a philosopher. He's written a lot of books about philosophy. And then Libor is another Jewish man who is a lot older. I believe he's like in his 70s and his wife recently passed away. And so the three of them are friends. I think Libor might have been their teacher back in the day. And so the three of them have this weird unlikely friendship. It's odd because Treslov is mostly the main character like it goes on all three of them but Treslov is the one that we see his perspective most of the time the only way i can really describe this is he's obsessed with jewish people like i don't 
really know what other way to describe it besides that he literally has a fetish for Jewish people because it's all about how he wishes he was his friend Sam and that he wishes he had being Jewish in common with Libor and Sam. One of the biggest plot points is that at the beginning of the book Treslov gets mugged by a woman and so he has this existential crisis because he thinks that the mugger says you Jew and so he's like she thought I was a Jewish person so I must be Jewish even though I'm not Jewish and so he spends a lot of the book <laughs> trying to make himself Jewish. My Goodreads review is literally going to be 307 pages of a man with a hard-on for Jewish people. Like it's just the most bizarre thing. His perspective is not enjoyable at all. To be honest, none of the characters are likable. Tresloff specifically is very unlikable and we spend the most time with him, but Libor and Sam also have some issues and they're not very likable either. Like none of these men are very particularly nice and I don't really understand what the plot was supposed to be. And so it's a lot about how Libor just lost his wife and Sam actually just lost his wife as well. She died very suddenly, even though she was a lot younger. And so they're both widows. And then Julian Tresloff is just like very obsessed with like thinking his life is as tragic as theirs, even though he literally just flits around dating different women. And now they're like in their fifties, like him and Sam, they were like school friends. I feel like I'm really talking in circles about this and it's very convoluted. And that's because I couldn't really tell you what this book is about besides some random discussion about Jewish people. I feel like I've said the word Jewish so many times because this book said the word Jewish so many times. And so the reason it's called the Finkler question is because Treslov refers to Jewish people as Finklers because Sam's name is Samuel Finkler. And so he's always like, oh, that's what Finklers do, Finkler, Finkler. And he just refers to Jewish people as Finklers, which is a very weird thing to do that feels kind of weirdly anti-semitic to me and so I don't know I just really didn't like this book and I, yeah I don't know I feel like I'm just saying words and that's how this book felt like I'm just saying words because this book was just saying words and I don't really know what it was supposed to actually be about like it genuinely was bad. My honest theory about why this won the Man Booker Prize is that either Howard Jacobson blackmailed the panel of judges who decides on that prize or he threatened to kill their families. Like, I don't know what he did, but he did something. He like tied them all up and forced them to give him this prize because this book genuinely did not have any redeeming qualities for me. Like it was such a slog to get through and none of the characters were likable. They were all kind of gross old men with nasty outlooks on life. And it was just, it was just really weird. And it had just honestly weird vibes. I hope that Howard Jacobson is Jewish because if he's not Jewish, this is a very weird book. I genuinely don't have a lot more to say about this book. I feel like it was on this list for a reason. There's a reason that people don't like it. It just was not a good time. And I get why a bunch of people read it because people typically seek out the nominees and winners of the Man Booker Prize. So obviously people went into this thinking, okay, if it won this prize, I should read it. And I feel like that's why we're all here confused, scratching our heads, giving this such a horrible rating. Okay, so the next book that I finished was Nothing But Black and Teeth. And this might be one of the only books on this list that you've heard of. I feel like this one was quite popular when it came out and there were a lot of mixed reviews. So it might even make sense to you why it's on this list. It's really weird that it has so much vitriol towards it because it's just a short story like novella situation, but a lot of people really did not like this. As you can see, over 27,000 people have rated this and the average is 2.71. Only 22% of people gave it four or five stars and 42% of people gave it two or three stars, which is almost 50% because that's how 42 is near 50. You can just leave it to me to always over explain things that are very obvious. So this book is about a group of friends who goes to stay in this haunted mansion in Japan. Two of them are getting married and the girl has always dreamt of getting married in a haunted house. I don't really know why it doesn't really get explained in the book because it is a novella when we're introduced to all these characters we find out that there's a lot of petty drama in between them a lot of them have dated each other at different times and the bride doesn't really get along with our main character but she's really close friends with everyone else in the group but as they stay in this haunted house ghosts sort of come out and different things start to happen and there's some deaths and it's sort of your typical haunted house story. I think that I'm going to be giving this two stars. I really wanted to not agree with everyone that it was bad because I liked the premise so much, but unfortunately the writing style is so excessively flowery that it makes it very difficult to actually pay attention to what's going on in the story. It was giving grad school energy, like I'm getting my master's in English and writing and I just really wanna impress everyone with the amount of words that I know. 
A quick snippet that I can find for you that I see in someone else's review on Goodreads is there was a line that said, a predatory stillness that drove a scream through the medulla oblongata. I just never really thought I would read the word medulla oblongata used that way in fiction. And I don't really feel like it drove home what she wanted because I kind of had to stop and think about what part of the brain that is. And it kind of took me out of the moment, like it was meant to be a scary moment. But I will say I can tell that Cassandra Kaw knows how to write. And so I'm really interested in reading another book by her. I feel like maybe I would like her prose in long form because another complaint that I have is that because this was a novella and it was so short, we didn't really get to know the characters very well. So I didn't really care about all their petty dramas between one another, like who dated who and why they hated each other because we just didn't spend enough time with these characters. So they
incel vibes unfortunately like he's just one of those guys that's like i'm the nice guy like why is everyone mean to me i'm trying to be successful and like why is nobody recognizing that but, so basically he's having this conversation with his friend room that's not his real name they just call him room because he likes motorcycles and they're basically talking about how girls are able to reject men really easily so room says and anyway it's the girl who always gets to choose men propose and women accept or in many cases reject it and then sham says in his perspective it's true Girls go around rejecting men like it's their birthright. They have no idea how much it hurts us. I read once, or maybe saw it during one of my Discovery Channel phases, that the reason for this is that it takes a lot of effort for the female to bear their offspring. Hence, they choose their mates carefully. Meanwhile, men dance around, spend cash, make them laugh, write stupid poems, anything to win them over. The only species where courting works in reverse is the seahorse. Instead of the female, the male seahorse bears the offspring. They carry baby seahorse eggs in their pocket. Guess what? The female seahorses are always hitting on the males, while the latter pucker their noses and get to pick the cutest female. I wish I were a seahorse. How hard can it be to carry a couple of eggs in a backpack? That's just a small sneak peek into what it was like to read Chom as a main character. He was just one of those guys that had a victim mindset. And so whenever he was talking about Priyanka, he was all like, well, was me. It's not my fault that she broke up with me. But then there's also these flashback scenes of dates that they used to go on. And he kind of just seems like a loser. Like he's really annoying and like not very enjoyable as a person. And I feel like he just doesn't take responsibility for himself. Honestly, besides Sean being a complete loser, the other biggest sin of this book was that it was just really boring. Like I said, the name of each chapter was like the time during the shift. So this one says 1.45 AM. And throughout the night, we get to know all these different characters that he works with. And I didn't like anyone, not even the female characters. Like I know I'm complaining about Sean, but the female characters were kind of annoying as well. And Priyanka was just kind of fat phobic it wasn't great like she was always like body shaming herself or body shaming people for like being larger and i did not love that aspect of the book either it definitely felt like a book written by a man and i mean that fully derogatory like i mean that as an insult also they actually made this into a film and i looked it up on imdb and it has a three out of ten rating which is very low for a movie rating so i can't say that it would be good as a film either also i'm just gonna go ahead and spoil the ending because it's so fucking random like the majority of this book we're living in the real world they're working at this call center they're talking about like their daily issues all the relationship drama everything and then suddenly at the end of the book they leave their shift to go to a club and and they get in a car accident and then Sham gets a phone call on his cell phone that says it's from God and they pick it up and it's actually God on the phone. So there's an entire chapter where they speak to God on the phone, but it's literally like in the last 50 pages. So it's so random because this book was not magical realism or speculative at all up until this point and so suddenly they just have this random ass talk with god and then afterwards him and priyanka get back together which is again so random because i feel like sham didn't really do any sort of soul searching also at the very start of the book sham's actually dating this other girl that works at the call center on a different shift and so he goes to meet her at the end of her shift and he doesn't even like her like he literally hates her and he's like shaming her the entire time he's talking to her he thinks she's like really lame and babyish and she always talks to like in a baby voice and like gives him nicknames and he thinks she's so annoying but he's using her as a rebound from priyanka and so when he gets together with priyanka at the end of the book he doesn't even break up with that other girl it just was like really boring and i do not recommend reading it especially because there is no audiobook like maybe it would have been a modicum better if i could have just listened to it but having to physically read this and it was literally only like 310 pages i was struggling like it was it was tough I didn't really like any of the characters and I thought the random conversation with God was weird. Let me know down below if you read any of these books. Do you agree with them being on this worst list? I guess to sum up my thoughts, I feel like Lost by Gregory Maguire does deserve a low rating, but I didn't hate his writing and I definitely would be interested in reading more from him. The Finkler question really had me questioning things. Did not love that. Very shocked that it won the Man Booker Prize. Like very, very confusing to me. Nothing But Black and Teeth is another one where I'm a little bit sad that it's on this worst list because I do see a lot of potential in it. I feel like it mostly suffered from its length and then the flowery writing. I think it was drowning in big words. And so I definitely see the potential and I want to read a different book by Cassandra Kaw. And then lastly, one night at the call center as i just went on and on about is boring and the main character is borderline and incel if you've made it to the end of this video and you enjoyed it feel free to use one of the phone emojis in your comment down below in honor of truly one of the worst books on goodreads and then we can just chat about everything that i read in the comments down below and have a good time i really hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you all so much for watching you're all beautiful have a nice day